First off, if you don't know what VWAP is, it's the volume weighted average price. It is calculated at the start of the day, and so it's recalculated at every start of the day. So when a new day starts in Bitcoin, it is a 24 hour market, but it still technically has a start of a day and end of a day. The new start of the day for Bitcoin is 8 p.m. Eastern. So at 8 p.m. Eastern, the VWAP goes back to zero and it recalculates. And from there, it starts taking all of the volume with all of the transactions and whatever price those trades were traded at. And it adds it all together and it averages it out to give you one moving average based on that uh, calculation. So it takes all the volume, all the prices that volume was traded at, and it averages it out and it gives you the VWAP. So what key things you want to look for on VWAP is it's just like any other moving average. You want to look for price being above VWAP uh, for bullish scenarios, price being below VWAP for bearish scenarios. You want VWAP to be going up. If you're, uh, if you're looking at a healthy bullish trend, you want VWAP to be going down for a healthy bearish trend. If you're in a consolidation like this, you can see VWAP is very steady. It is decreasing because the overall average price is decreasing. Typically, when you see a sideways VWAP like this, you are very safe to buy the dips and sell the highs. Buy the dips, sell the highs. Just like you would in any other standard range trading. So like here you have this range. You have a very solid um, VWAP. It's not really moving up or down. You're safe to buy the lows and sell the highs. So another thing is if you see like a very bullish day, kind of like this day here, we have VWAP being recalculated during the start of the day. And then we start to uptrend, right? When you see an uptrending VWAP along with an uptrending price, you are very safe to buy the dips to VWAP. Especially if these dips are on low volume. You can see all of these dips are below relative volume. The reason you're safe to buy them even though it's low volume is because VWAP is one of the most institutionally used indicators. It is used by the vast majority of large large players, big big guys, not not the retail guys. Um and when you see dips towards VWAP, you're going to see a lot of that smart money start to come in. A lot of those big players start to come in. Um, they're going to hold price above VWAP or below VWAP if you're on a bearish day. This is on. This is when VWAP is uptrending with price or downtrending with price. The main idea behind VWAP for institutions is they don't believe they made a good trade unless they bought below VWAP or they bought a test of VWAP or they sold above VWAP or sold a test of VWAP. So for example, the smart money would not be selling this for the most part. This is obviously if we're talking about just VWAP and volume trading. We're not talking about support and resistance, supply and demand, any of that other stuff. Just looking at VWAP, the smart money would not be selling this. They would be waiting for price to get closer to VWAP and to test VWAP. So like this, they would have been selling here. They would have been selling here. They would have been selling here, a failure of VWAP. They would not be selling massive extensions of VWAP. 
and they would not be buying massive extensions of VWAP. So key things you want to you want to remember if price is up and VWAP is up you want to be buying the test of VWAP and you do not want to be buying the extensions of VWAP you don't want to be buying really high you also want to look out for if price is rising and VWAP is rising you want to look out for the test when it's on very low volume. So like if this is relative volume and you have very low volume, those tests are usually going to bounce. Same thing with a bear trend. Price decreasing, VWAP decreasing. Look for the test of VWAP. Especially on low volume. If there's low volume, it's going to be very hard to break VWAP. On consolidation days, if price is ranging and VWAP is very steady, you're safe to buy the lows and sell the highs. Or buy the lows and sell VWAP and short the highs and cover VWAP. Think of VWAP. Yeah, I'm live. Think of VWAP as, or sorry, you, you asked, is it live? Uh, what do you mean? Are you talking about, is it 100% uh, like accurate to where price is now? So yeah, so if you're, if you're seeing a, a very steady VWAP. You're safe to buy the dips. Obviously, you want to you want to do a little bit of further analysis and determine where your range is. Buy the dips. You can cover VWAP or sorry, sell VWAP or sell the highs. And you can short the highs and cover VWAP or cover the lows. Yeah, the stream's live. Sorry. Yeah, I'm live. Let's look for, so days like these, so VWAP, this is also really good to have, like, I used to trade with these on, if you go to the background, session breaks, or sorry, time zone, you can turn on your session breaks, so this is, this is telling you basically when VWAP is resetting, and when, um, when each day was, was opening and closing. So if we look at, so like if we're trading during this day, we can see during yesterday's price action, what did we see? We saw a pretty steady VWAP. You were safe to sell the highs and buy the lows. Your overall, your overall VWAP was about here. And you can use other indicators that will, that will give you the VWAP close. Uh, I think th there's a few. I don't know of them exactly. I think standard deviation, VWAP standard deviation bands does it. Um, what I typically do is I, I'll show you after. I'll show you after this. Um, but yeah, so you see that yesterday this price action here between these two, these two breaks. Can you guys see these breaks? Let me make sure you guys can see these. So between these two breaks, you can see that VWAP was sideways and you were safe to buy the lows, sell the highs. So what we're going to look for in today's range is we're going to look for either a continuation of that same setup, VWAP being sideways, or we're going to look for a change in VWAP. So we started off the day, we were unable we were unable to break the overall POC of VWAP. VWAP is, is volume weighted average price. It takes all the volume with all the prices that the volume was traded at and it averages it all together into one moving average. 
Um, so yeah, so we were unable to we were unable to break yesterday's close. So here's yesterday's close of VWAP. We shot up during the day. Let me zoom in. So during the open, we shot up. We tried to test yesterday's close and failed. So now we saw a decreasing. Sorry, let me go back. So now we saw a decreasing price with a decreasing VWAP. So you're safe to sell the test of VWAP. Um, so like right here when you're when VWAP is right above price acting as resistance, you are safe to sell that. And then we see an extension of VWAP. You don't want to sell extensions of VWAP. So when it becomes very far away from VWAP, you don't want to sell that. We saw a break of VWAP here. You see VWAP turn red to green. You're gonna have to code. You're gonna have to code a. Um, I was just about to say that Kitoy. <laughs> I can post this in. Uh, I can post this in chat because it's very, it's very easy. This is the the VWAP because the standard VWAP is not. Unrecognized command. Sorry that it thinks I'm trying to give you a command. There you go. Standard VWAP doesn't give you the rising and falling colors, so I had to get Gyro to make me one. Yeah, you can use that. It's only like two lines of code. But yeah, so we saw a failure of yesterday's VWAP. If we're talking about this day, yesterday's VWAP close. We saw a failure. And then we started to move down. Let me get rid of some of this. So we saw a failure of yesterday's close. VWAP decreasing, price decreasing. So as long as you don't try to break through VWAP on high volume, you're not going to break it. As long as there's low volume, uh, towards the buy side and high volume towards the sell side, you're fine to keep selling. And then we started to see the volume come in. But what did I tell you guys? You're not going to break VWAP on low volume, right? But look what we did. We broke VWAP on high volume. So if you start to see price start to go towards VWAP, if there's a lot of volume, you will be able to break VWAP. And then once you're above VWAP, and VWAP is a support, you're not going to be able to break VWAP on low volume. You're going to need high sell volume to break VWAP. So what do we see here? Dip towards VWAP, low sell volume, bounce. Dip towards VWAP, low sell volume, bounce. Same exact thing. Dip towards VWAP, low sell volume, bounce. So now we're seeing a bullish bias. We're seeing a price increasing volume or VWAP increasing. We broke above yesterday's VWAP close and we tested it. Like I always tell you guys, first test trades are very profitable. You failed the level, broke the level, first test, second test, rocket ship. So we can look at the same thing on a bearish day. Let's go to a bearish day. So obviously this is in hindsight, but you can still do this live because VWAP, you can see this is VWAP live. Okay, so now this is our this is our previous day. Let's pretend like we're trading this day. We have a very bullish day yesterday. Price is maintaining above VWAP all day long. You had one failure candle. You regained VWAP. Your, your VWAP closed right here. It actually closed like up here, but th that's when it was starting to reset. So before it was resetting, this is where it closed. Let me zoom in a little bit. We had a small try to, we tried to bounce here during the open. Failed immediately. What do we see? We see a decreasing VWAP, decreasing price. 
You are not going to be able to break VWAP on low buy volume. What do we see here? We see low buy volume. Failure of VWAP. Price decreasing, VWAP decreasing. You are safe to sell the test of VWAP. Or you're safe to sell as long as you're near VWAP. Because VWAP is basically a moving resistance line or a support line. So if it's right above price, that is resistance. Like I said many times, you cannot break VWAP on low volume. So as long as there is low buy volume right here, you are safe to sell because you will not break VWAP on low buy volume. Low buy volume, continuation failure. This is an extension of VWAP. You do not want to be selling this. You are very far away from your average price. It, think of this as like your institutional average price. All the smart money is looking at VWAP. They know what the average price is. This, unless it is an extremely volatile event, you are not going to see massive moves if you are already very far away from VWAP. And if you do see massive moves when you're already far away from VWAP, VWAP will typically start to move very rapidly towards price because that means that you are seeing a large influx of volume. And if you see a large influx of volume, that is going to change the calculation um, or that's going to be taken into account in the calculation of VWAP. So you're going to decrease rapidly. So just know that if you're very extended away from VWAP, your, your, your edge is very small. So if you're taking a short and your price is far below VWAP, your edge is very small. The closer you are to VWAP, the higher your edge. So uh, let's continue the day. So we saw an extension of VWAP, an extension of VWAP here. We begin to consolidate. VWAP is slowly falling. So the gap between VWAP and price is decreasing. So as I said, the closer you are to VWAP, the better your edge. You can see here to here, you had a better edge here to short this than you did to short this. Because you are closer to VWAP. You have low buy volume as you're approaching VWAP. You're not going to break VWAP on low buy volume. You're safe to short. Oops. You're safe to short. Okay, so what did we see? This day was 100% bearish. So your overall market bias was bearish. If I ever talk about market bias, I'm talking about your VWAP session. Okay, so now, now this day is our, is our previous day. I think I might have already gone over this day, but I'm going to do it again. So now this price action is our previous block. We want to first take a look at where VWAP closed before it started resetting. VWAP closed around 51.20. So that's our kind of, that's our pivot point. Once again, we break VWAP high buy volume. We are unable to break VWAP for the entire day because we do not have high sell volume. So once again, you are safe to buy the dips of VWAP as long as there is low sell volume. The closer you are to VWAP, the better your edge. You can see here you had a very high edge to buy this. That was the best buying opportunity you had all day. Even though this move would have netted you maybe a bigger percentage, your edge was much better on this move. So if you would have taken this long, you can see we tested yesterday's VWAP close pretty much perfectly. But we were unable to break. So we are still 
if you looked at this in a multiple day bias, we are still in a bearish bias because we were unable to break the previous VWAP close of the previous day. So if we're looking at just this day, you're in a bullish bias. If you're looking at these two days, you're in a bearish bias because you're unable to break yesterday's VWAP. If we're looking at all three of these days, you're still in a bearish bias until you are able to break that VWAP. Does that make sense? You guys understand where I'm getting this data? So look here. We are still in a bearish bias until this VWAP is broken. So you have another VWAP close right here. So now you have basically a range forming. Now you have like a consolidation forming. You have this day VWAP close, this day VWAP close, this day was bullish, this day was bearish. So what does that mean? If you have a bearish day into a bullish day, you're basically ranging. You're going to take this VWAP close, this VWAP close, as long as they were not broken. And that becomes your VWAP range. That becomes your, your, your market, basically. That is your market high. That's your market low. This is your average price. This is what institution, a lot of institutional traders are doing when they are looking at volume trading and looking at their, their average price. If they're looking to get in massive positions, I can guarantee you they are not taking massive positions without knowing if they're getting a good, if they're getting a good price based on the average price. Okay, so let's continue. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do this a lot faster now because I hope you guys are you're with me at this point. Um, if I'm going too fast, just tell me to slow down. But I, th I think you guys are with me at this point. So this is our high. This is our low. We have a bearish bias. We have a bullish bias. This becomes our volume range. Okay, so what are we looking for? We're looking for the open of VWAP. You always want to watch the open of VWAP. Don't take it immediately. But if you're looking at like a 15 minute, give it like an hour or so. Give it, give it some time to form some data. Give it at least, I'd say, one to three hours to, to form some data. Um, so if you're looking at like a 15 minute, give it a few hours. Okay, so you have like three hours here. You've got 12 bars worth of data of VWAP. That's still not a lot. If you want to give it some more, you can. But don't just... As soon as the day opens, you see a green, like, okay, so like this. As soon as the day opens, you see a green VWAP. Price is rising. Okay, I'm going to take a long. That's not good. This VWAP is brand new. You have basically no data to go off of that VWAP. So be very careful using the opening day VWAP. It's like taking a survey and you're, you're surveying five people. And then you're basing your survey off this data and you're, you're selling a product based on five people. That's not good. So make sure during the start of the day, you're giving it some time to get some data. All right. So once we have some data, we're going to look at what, what the VWAP open, the VWAP opening session is doing compared to the previous few days. Okay. So this VWAP session is bullish. This VWAP session is bearish. Like I said, that's our range. Okay. So this opening session, this opening VWAP session is bullish. Price is rising. VWAP is rising. But if we did some analysis, we know that this is a resistance point. We know that this is a resistance point because we were unable to break it in the previous session. And it was our close of VWAP in two days ago session. So we know that that is a resistance point. So if we're looking at this VWAP open, we're going to be very hesitant to buy this here. If you bought this here, you're not doing enough analysis. You would have just been looking at maybe this day and this day and you're like, okay, yesterday's VWAP opened here and now we're bullish. This is a good session. We're going to see a breakout. You're not doing enough analysis. If you did a further analysis, you would see that we have a resistance point here. 
Okay, so our opening session, what did I what did I tell you guys? You're not going to break VWAP on low volume. You start to see the volume come in once you start to break through VWAP. And now you start to see a lot of volume come in once you're below VWAP. You're starting to see a kind of a um kind of a battle here. Um you have a VWAP extension, you're pretty far away from VWAP. If VWAP continues to be sideways, you are safe to buy the lows and sell the highs. So you probably wouldn't have bought this low because you don't really have a lot of data. But once you started to range here and you see that VWAP is pretty sideways, you are decreasing. But you could have bought this extension. It's a little riskier. Like I said, the farther you would the farther you are away from VWAP, the lower your edge. So that is a riskier trade, obviously. A better trade is waiting for the failure of VWAP on low volume. You would have taken a short here. You would have got stopped out because you did see the buy volume come in. So you are above this range. So that's your low, that's your high. If you would have taken this long here, your stop loss would have been below the range. Yesterday's VWAP close. If you would have taken a short here, if you did not have all the data, you would have been stopped out on the buy here because you saw the buy volume come in. So this day you're just ranging. You could have seen if you taken the short, you would have got stopped. If you would have taken the opening short, you would have did, you would have did fine. If you would have taken this long, you would have did fine. So if you have all of this data, if you know this is your range range low, range high, you should be buying the low. Let me get rid of some of this. It's probably getting confusing. So if you, what I'm trying to say is, if you're just looking at this day, you would have been chopped out. Because you would have, if, if you would have shorted this, or sorry, if you would have longed this, you would have been chopped out because you weren't looking at enough data. If you would have shorted this, you would have been chopped out because you're not looking at enough data. If you're looking at enough data, and you know that you're just ranging here, you would have taken this into account and you would have shorted this, longed this, shorted this, longed this. So instead of just looking at just this tiny little piece of data and then basing your VWAP trades off of just that, that day, take into account the previous days and you'll, you'll make better trades. Would you trail it to take profit? Um, trail which just all of your trades or one particular trade? So every trade, so that depends. If I'm, if I'm specifically VWAP trading, this is my strategy. This is what I'm basing all of my entries on, all of my exits. You can trail if you're looking at a day like this. If, you're, if your bias is 100% in one direction, you can trail. So for this day, let's say we've already seen like this, this data. Let's say we're like right here. So if we longed this, we could trail VWAP. The problem with trailing VWAP is it's going to reset. So if it resets, your trail's hit. Your trail is always hit. You see what I'm saying? If you trail VWAP, you're, it's always hit once the day closes. Oh, but yeah, so to, to go back to what you were saying, you asked if, you, if I would trail my profit. So you can trail below VWAP just know that when VWAP when VWAP when the day closes and VWAP resets you're always going to be hit so what you could do is trail it based on VWAP closes if you're doing like a very long term trading system so like if I if I shorted 
how would I say this? So like if I shorted like this day and I'm in like a long-term trade, I would put my stop loss on the VWAP close and then it would have got triggered sadly. Or you could do like a close above your VWAP close. It's just not a very good trailing system. So for the most part, if you're trading VWAP, I would say just to, to follow price action. Follow like breaks of VWAP and test of VWAP. So like if I'm a if I'm in a long this day, if it if it breaks through VWAP, I'm closing. But then when it shoots up here, I'm gonna look at my my analysis. So I, like I have this range here, right? That's where my stop's gonna be. My stop's gonna be below that VWAP close because that was my range high before we broke out. If that makes sense. I trade Bitcoin on either Binance or BitMEX. I'll either trade it on Tether or I'll trade it on Margin with uh, BitMEX. So let's do this. Let's do this um, instead of hindsight. Let's do this right now. We're going to have our VWAP close in two hours. I'm most likely not going to be streaming when that happens. Um, but so what did we see today? We saw a VWAP, a VWAP, um, a range, VWAP consolidation. So just take the high, take the low, and then you're safe to buy the lows and sell the highs. As long as price is consolidating, VWAP is consolidating, you're safe to buy the lows, sell the highs. This is the only case where VWAP will be broken on low volume when VWAP is just heavily consolidating, when VWAP is just straight sideways. Then you can just slice through it. But if it's uptrending or downtrending in like any way, you will really struggle to break it on low volume. Even if it's a slight uptrend, like you can see this is not a very strong uptrend. Even if it's a slight uptrend, you will struggle to, to, to break it on low volume. But if you are sideways, you will slice through it pretty easily. So like for this, let me delete everything. So if we're looking at the past three days. Oh, so hold on. Let me show you another thing that I do. Almost forgot. So if you go to the volume profile, go to session volume. This helps you read VWAP even more. Because not only are you looking at your VWAP, you're looking at where that volume was traded during the day when you're doing your, your previous analysis. Okay? So... What you can do is, if you don't want to like look at these, if you don't want to look at the session, you can get rid of the volume profile and then just keep the POC. So this is your point of control. That's where the most volume was traded during that day. So if we look at this POC along with the VWAP close, it gives us our most important levels of the days. So we had our VWAP close here. We have our POC down here. We have our VWAP close here. So we're seeing a lot of support down here. VWAP close there. And you have your POC here. And if we take, let's just take one more day. We have almost the same exact thing. VWAP and POC has the same exact level. But look at this. The VWAP, the VWAP close here. Oh, this is the same day. Sorry. I already, I already took this day. So here's the POC. And then this day, let's see, VWAP close. 
and then POC. Okay, so what are we seeing? We're seeing a massive cluster of volume on one, two, three, four days. Four days, where is all the POC closing and all, or sorry, all the VWAP closing and all the point of controls? They're all right down here in this 50, 50, 65 to 50, 90 range. Meaning if we were to fall here, very likely that we bounce somewhere around there. Because the past four days worth of data is telling us that most of the volume is traded right there. Now we do have a high POC on this day because we had a little bit of a bullish day turn into a bearish day. So we do have a high POC here, but look what already happened. We've already, we've already tested that POC. So we saw this massive breakout, right? We broke through that POC, no problem. Started to consolidate. Had another POC form on today. And then we saw a massive failure. Look where it bounced. It bounced on not yesterday's POC, but the day before. So you do have support there. You had a... A very long VWAP there too before the VWAP started getting tanked. So you can see there, look at that. Look where we bounced. Look where VWAP is just consolidating until we see that massive rejection of VWAP. So that's basically telling you the same way that I teach you guys with my doji levels. What do I teach you? It's the last form of support or the last form of resistance before an impulse move up or down. Same thing with VWAP. Think of this as the last form of support before a massive move down. Because you see VWAP is just very steady, very steady, and then it tanks. That's the last form of support before VWAP tanked. And look where we're bouncing. We're bouncing right on this day's POC and this day's VWAP. These levels are not going to be exact because these are more like volume nodes. So think of VWAP and POCs as volume nodes because that's what they are. They're not exact prices. So if we were to pull up the volume profile here, you would see that this is not just an exact level. This is a volume node. We have a volume node here. We have a gap. We have a volume node here. We have a gap. Volume node, volume node, gap, volume node. So what I'm seeing currently is, if, what is this closing? This closes in an hour and 40 minutes. So if this closes in an hour and 40 minutes, like we're currently seeing, we have a support right here we have a support at 5208 and we have a support at 50 so just 5200 basically low 5200 is our support so if we close in two hours and we are unable to break this support we are looking like we are going to continue upward because we are closing above support so this is a bullish a bullish setup we had a an out a bullish breakout yesterday and now we are consolidating and forming a high volume node towards a higher price. So what is that telling you? That's telling you that people are okay to buy it at this price because they have bought it at this price. They've been consistently buying it at this price. Look at this volume. We don't have a lot of volume back here, but these last two days we do. So this basically tells you that people are okay. They think this is a fair price. Yeah, 5,200. Yeah, that's a fair price. I'll take some Bitcoin. Hey, Hookah, I appreciate the bits, man. So what I'm seeing is if today closes and we remain above the VWAP close, remain above the POC close, that becomes our support. It becomes a bullish pattern. Until our VWAP close and and POC close are broken, we are bullish. Because if we look back the past previous days, one, two, three, four, five, six, 
but you have no resistance. There's no resistance for the past week. If we go back to like what I was telling you guys earlier, where, I don't remember where it was, I think it was here, yeah, here. It's not like this, it's not this scenario. Because this scenario, we had resistance, right? If we looked back previous days, we have a ton of resistance. This is our VWAP close. We have a bunch of volume above price. So down here, you're not as bullish because we have a ton of resistance. But if we're looking at current price action, we've already seen a massive breakout. And if we look at the previous days, where is our resistance? We have resistance back here a week ago. From this week, we're seeing nothing but increasing uh, POCs and increasing volume. Or increasing um, volume is increasing as price is rising, I should say. So I know this is getting ridiculous, so let me let me delete this. Or actually, let me make let me make one final point before I delete this. So your bearish scenario here. Your bullish scenario is if you close above your support, you're looking to go higher. If you don't close above your support and you break through your support, these are your targets. So you're shorting a break of this VWAP, this POC, on high volume, obviously. You don't want to short it on low volume. If you short it on low volume, you're going to get wrecked because people are going to buy the lows. If the volume comes in and this breaks to, uh, today's VWAP, today's POC, you're looking for a failure down to 5160, 5120, and then 50, um, about 5050, 5065. Those are your two scenarios. 